Ugh, my big freak head. I'm a walking candy apple. Can size up. Why can't I size down? Why can't I size down? Have you ever experienced this problem where you can't get something to size down within a camera frame in the manner you like? Well, you're not alone, but there is an easy fix. And today I'm gonna to go over what that fix is and the situations where you might wanna consider using it and how this trick can then give you a lot more flexibility. Okay, let's dive right in. Okay, so today's tutorial was inspired by a question I got on YouTube. So I had someone who was trying to make it a, a design element, a background element for a page, but she said when she added this to the page, it would scale to a ridiculous size and then it wouldn't all fit on the page and she could not scale it down. So she wanted to know how to fix this problem, what is going on here. So let's take a look at an example of the type of thing she was talking about and I'll show you what's going on here and how to fix it. So to fully understand this problem and understand the different things that can happen in Canva, we have to understand a few things. First of all, what are the things that can happen when we add a photo to design? And then what is the bounding area of a photo or an element? And then also what are frames? How do frames work and how does that interact with elements when we add elements to that frame? So to understand this, let's just work an example. So we have this gentleman up here. I could just click on an item here. And when you click on an item in the left menu, it just adds them to your design. You're not gonna have them scaled up. They're not gonna get placed in the frame. If you just click on something once here with your left mouse button, it's just gonna get added to your design. However, if instead of clicking, we drag it out, then a couple things can happen. If I'm dragging to my center of design here, it's gonna be the same thing where he just gets placed there. But suddenly if I'm dragging towards an edge here, the top edge or the bottom edge, then suddenly look at how he snaps up and takes up the full area of a design. Now this might be a little confusing at first because if I go under the position menu, I see that he is not my background element. And also if I right click on him to see if I can detach him from the frame, it doesn't say detach image from frame. Now you probably know how frames work here in Canva, but let's just do a simple reminder. So you can add any frame to your design here. And when you have a frame to your design, you're gonna see this placeholder image, but then you can drag anything else over top of that frame. It's just gonna snap into that frame be contained by that frame. And if you wanna replace what's in the frame, drag something else over the image that's in the frame, boom, it's gonna replace that image. Now you know it's a frame even when it's covered up because if you right click on that, you're gonna see this detached image option. You'll be able to get rid of the image and see your frame. But we notice we do not have this with this item right here. If I click on this item, this gentleman here, I right click, I do not have that image in a frame. So why did it snap up here? Because we know it's not the background because we can see set images as a background is still an option and we can scale it down. And if it was the background element, we would not be able to scale it down. If I right click here, I set image as a background. Now you'll notice I cannot scale it down because the rules for something, if it's the background element, you can come under the position, you will see this little icon right here, letting you know it's the background element. It means it's gonna take up the entire background you cannot scale it down and it's gonna be the backmost, the bottommost layer here in your design. So those are sort of the rules for your background. Now your background can be an image, it can also be a color. So I could come up here, I could set this to a color. Now suddenly we don't have that image in the background anymore, but I can hit Control Z to undo that. And I could also just detach the image from the background the same way you detach an image from a frame. So what is going on? Why do we sometimes add this element here and have it snap up to take up the full area of the design. Well, the reason for this is that when you add a photo to a frame or the background, the bounding area of the photo is gonna expand out until it, reached the bounds, it reaches the bounds of that frame or that background. Now, even though that didn't happen in this instance here, we know we're not adding to a frame or background, what you need to understand is every photo sort of acts like a pseudo frame. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean, if I drag this onto the screen here, I just put this element onto the screen right here by clicking on it, even though that's technically not in a frame, it sort of acts like a frame and then I could come over to here and drag any other photo over top of that and it's gonna replace it. Notice if I go into the position menu, that one photo disappeared. If I come back here and I find another element here and I drag it over that frame, you'll notice it snaps into that area and it takes over where that was in the layer stack. So all photos can act like frames. You can just drag one photo over top of another photo and it's gonna replace that photo. Now that's great if that's what you want it to do, but that's not always gonna be the case. 
you're not always going to want to do that. So you need to understand this functionality and that is what's going to happen by default. And then coupled with that, you have to have the knowledge also that Canva has this default behavior when you're dragging something else on the screen. If you aim for the center, it's just going to sort of get placed right there. But if you drag something out and you aim towards the edge here, then it's going to have this scale up and fill the whole page. I think it's just a UI thing where they're trying to, you know, make it easy for you to add something to the whole background here. And so if you drag something and you go towards the edge, it's going to fill the whole page. Now that may or may not be what you want, but you have to understand what is happening there. Now, why when I add this one here, does it suddenly scale to ridiculous size, but I can add this element here and then it just fits with the frame. It looks more reasonable. Well, this is the next piece of the puzzle. You have to understand the bounding area of a photo and how that works when you add it to a frame or one of these pseudo frames when you're talking about just any photo. So to fully understand this, let's talk about what the bounding area of a photo is. Make sure you understand what I'm talking about when I talk about a bounding box or a bounding area. And then we need to understand how that interacts with the frame when you place an element to a frame. Actually be useful and what tricks can you use to give yourself more flexibility when you need it? Okay, so to answer the question of why these appear to be acting so differently, we have to understand about bounding areas and what is a bounding area. So if you click on any photo here, uh, you'll see these resize handles and you also notice this blue outline around the photo. Now let me just get rid of the background so we can see a little bit better. So we can see that when I click on this here, I have this blue box that surrounds it and then the control handles at the edges. So this is the bounding box. Now if I bring this next item onto the screen here, we'll notice that it too has this blue bounding box, but you'll notice how these are vastly different shapes. And these vastly different shapes of these bounding areas are why we're getting this different behavior when we add these to the background, when they snap into that frame that takes up the full shape here of the background. Now to understand this, let's look at how the bounding area of a photo will interact with a frame when you add something to a frame. So when I take this item here and I drag it over top of the frame and it goes into the frame, it expands until the outer edges of that bounding area reach the frame. So to understand this even better, let's go into the crop mode here. So you can click on any item within a frame and you can enter this crop mode by clicking up here or an easier way to do it. Just double click with your left mouse button and you're going to enter here into this uh this dialog box here. Now let me put it a little bit more in the center so we can see a little bit better. Double click to get in the crop mode. Now you'll notice now we can see within crop mode the bounding areas of this photo and I can click on a corner and I can drag something out. I can reposition it within the frame, but I cannot bring the bounding areas inside the bounding areas of the frame. So it has to expand so it extends beyond the frame. We can't have any empty areas of the frame here uh, that don't have the bounding area within them. So I can drag down, but as soon as I hit an edge, or if I push down this way, as soon as I hit an edge, that's as far as you can go. You can't scale down within that. The bounding areas are always going to reach the end of your frame. So what happens by default is it center sort of center aligned it here, but it expanded out until it at least met the edge of this frame. Now, if I come and do the same thing with this photo here and drag this photo over top, it's going to replace in the frame. But now if we look at the bounding areas of this frame, since it's so tall vertically here, I cannot really scale it down any smaller than this within the frame because I've already reached the bounding area of that frame. So I can reposition it and I could have his face in the frame or I could have a shirt in the frame and then you click out to commit the changes, but we can't scale below that because of the bounding area. And now if I just detach this from the frame again, so we can see this here, uh, we see how the bounding area of this gentleman that was cut out really conforms right in to sort of uh, the edges of the actual pixels here. Now, depending on whether you cut something out here within Canva with a background mover, or you're going to bring it from a different program, you may have different situations where you have extra space uh, around your subject, or you may not. Let's just go over an example. Let's bring this gentleman back here. Let's use this background remover. You'll notice when you use the background remover in Canva, it does not change the bounding area. I still have all this extra white space around this gentleman. And so when I do that, that means when I add it to the frame, 
I can sort of still keep that sizing. However, if I wanted to size him down even farther so he was smaller within the frame, I could not do that because I'm going to hit that bounding edge. Now, this might not always matter, but there may be certain situations where it does matter and you want more flexibility. So let's just sort of go over a practical example talking about a scenario where this might matter and then how do you bring back some of this flexibility. All right, so I'm going to just go ahead and get rid of this element here on screen. Uh, but let's say this other element over here, this picture here, let's just say this is your headshot you took of yourself. Uh, and maybe because of the way it was shot, it was shot in pretty tight. Maybe it's come into Canva and you don't have a whole lot of bounding space. Uh, but maybe you don't have a lot of the images and this is still an image that you want to use of yourself for social media icons, things like that, different graphics, and you just want to have a little flexibility. So let's pretend you were uh, creating sort of a circular Instagram profile pic. So to do that, I'm just going to come up here and I'm going to add an element on screen. So I'm just going to look for a circle frame. So I'm just going to type in circle frame to bring up the basic Canva circle frame and I'll put that on screen. And then a lot of times when you cut out an image like this, you might be stacking it. Uh, let me just show you what I mean. So we'll go ahead and we'll duplicate this. And because of that, now I can put a background color in the background. So let's just come in here and pick a color. So let's just pick like this yellow color or something like this for starters. Uh, and then I can put the other frame right on top of it. And because we have cut out and we have some areas in this photo that are just transparent pixels, then when I add it to the frame, we're also going to see that frame behind because of that uh, cut out area. Those, those areas where there's transparent pixels. Now, as mentioned before, we can move up and down in the frame. So we want to slide down so we can see our head, but I can't get the head of my photo here anywhere below this uh, top line because the bounding area of this photo is so tight uh, and maybe you do want more flexibility than that and so to do that we're gonna have to add some bounding space so here's what we're gonna do we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna detach this image from the frame so we'll go ahead and we'll detach this image I'm gonna hit control C to copy it we're gonna bring it over onto this next page and I'll hit control V to paste it now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this image as I'm going to slide it down. Let's make it about this high here. We'll just center it in the page like here. And now I'm going to save this off so that we have a lot of white space that we're going to save as an extra bounding area that's just negative space, white space. And that's going to give us a lot of flexibility when we bring this back into Canva. So we're going to export it, then we're going to re-import it, and we're going to have a photo with a, a bigger bounding area. Now, one thing to watch for because I'm saving this off with him scaled down. If I just save it off at the same size now uh, as this document, I'm throwing away some pixels because he's not going to be this large made up of this many pixels. Suddenly I'm scaling him down to a smaller portion of my image. So I'm throwing away some pixels. So there are a couple things to watch for. First of all, when we go to the menu here and we go ahead and we want to download this, I would choose PNG instead of uh, JPEG, just because if you choose JPEGs, first of all, you have this quality thing. And then if you don't have this set to 100, even if you do have it set to 100, JPEGs by default have a lot of compression. And so you do that a couple times, you can start to degrade your quality of your image. So I would set this to PNG instead. And then the second thing I re would recommend, if you want to sort of preserve more pixels, if you're a Pro Canva user, you have the ability to choose a larger scale so instead of just one to one here we could scale this up almost three times and so now if i download this image scaling this up as much as i can just to bring some more pixels back in uh, then i'm going to end up with an image that has a little bit more quality to it still and i won't scale it up and get those blurry pixel edges now i say all that but you have to remember if you bring in a photo that's really small to begin with you're already going to have a problem you can't take a photo that's made up of 100 pixels and suddenly you have a thousand pixels so you have to have a large enough quality image to begin with but then to avoid it getting scaled down when you compress it size wise like this you may want to export it at a larger size. Hopefully that makes sense. So in other words, if I three times this, even though I'm scaling them down three size, three times, I'm still bringing them back with a reasonable amount of pixels. So we'll go ahead and we'll do it like this. We're going to go ahead and share. We're going to go ahead and I'll save that off. So again, I'm going to go download. We're going to download that as a PNG. And I'm going to preserve those transparent pixels. And I'm just doing the current page. So I'll go ahead and do that. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to save this off 
and we'll download this and then I'm going to re-export this back up to Canva. So we'll go ahead and save it here, resizing with frame problem. We'll just call it headshot or something different, but we'll call it headshot. We'll go ahead and we'll do that and then I can bring it right back into Canva. So you can use the uploads tab over here. So if you find the uploads tab, you can upload it through here or if you can see where it got just downloaded, you actually can just pull it right over like this and then if you go under uploads tab, you'll see it's, it's uploading now back into Canva. So what have we done by doing this? So now if I take this one here, we can see how tight the bounding area is. And if we drag them into the frame, we just don't have a lot of room. If we go into crop mode, we can't bring them down. But then suddenly if I add this one here, look at all the bounding space that we have now. So now I can drag this one into the frame. We can see how small he is with the, within the frame, but I can size up within the frame. So suddenly we now have a lot more flexibility because of that added bounding space. So this is just a little trick that you might wanna do sometimes just to give yourself a little bit more flexibility when it comes to uh, working with images that you might stack into frames, images that start with that tight bounding space and you wanna have a little bit more bounding space, now you have a little bit more flexibility. And I, uh, yes, I did forget to export that with the upscale size settings. And we can see because of that, I have this, this blurry image here. The resolution just isn't enough to support what I'm trying to do. But I'm glad I made this mistake because now we can illustrate uh, the difference if we do it the correct way. So now let me just go ahead and grab this whole stack. I'm just going to hit the Alt button or Option button on your keyboard to drag this over. And now I've uploaded a uh, resized version where I did do that upscale trick I was talking about. And now let me just drag this into the frame. And then let's go ahead and scale this up a fair amount. So let's get it to basically the same scale as the other one here. So we're going to go like that. Uh, I might not get them exactly the same scale, but we're going to get them the basically the same scale. Click out. And now let's zoom back in and look at the difference of quality we're getting between this image here and this image here. So let me just fit this to the screen here. But we can see that this is much more crisper than this thing. I think I'm still pushing it a little bit. It's starting to maybe blur slightly, but this one is just basically unusable. So keep that in mind when you're upscaling like that. If you want to get some extra pixels back when you've actually scaled the image down within your page, your document, you can use that skip. You can use that trick. Now, if you don't have that option on as a pro user, when you come in here and you have this PNG or JPEG uh, and you have the size option, the other thing you can do is just from your Canva home screen. So let me just open up the Canva home screen. You can, of course, just come to uh, your uh, page here. You can use this custom size option, create a really big document this way, and then paste in that page. Uh, so in other words, in this example here, I would come here, maybe I'd copy this page here, control C, and then I'd make a much bigger document and I would paste it in there. And so that's basically doing the same thing as scaling it up. You're just using a little workaround trick since you're a free Canva user. So you can still do something like that to preserve the quality as long as the starting asset is large enough resolution to support the upscaling. And then with things positioned the way you want, thanks to that added flexibility, of course you can go on and do anything else you want to finish off your design. Okay, so I hope you learned something. I know we covered a lot of basics, but these basics really make a big difference when you understand them. They save you time, they give you more flexibility, and just help you get to the design you want to get to. Okay, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. Feel free to like and subscribe. And if you want to stay up to date with all things Canva, graphic design, and entrepreneurship, I will also post a link in the first pinned comment down below to my free Canva newsletter. Thanks again. See you soon. Everything I do, so instinctive and so passionate. Every word I move, so descriptive like an adjective. I got a vendetta against people who patented. Being negative when you should be getting after it. I got facts over facts over tracks. This and that, spitting slow, spitting fast. I could roast, I could gas. Think I'm okay at last, but I don't know if that can erase all the past.